technical presentation so um, I think we've had enough uh, technical presentations We're, I'm just going to give a general overview of Thompson Distill and it's the, the capabilities and the services it can offer to the uh, alcohol technical industry. Thompson Distill it's a Spanish company uh, it's based in uh, the headquarters is in Madrid Spain um, and it's a company specialized uh, in the production, design, engineering, supplying, alcohol and ethanol plants and some of the derivatives that we get from ethanol. So basically the company, uh, it's an old company, it's more than 150 years old. Um, and it's a technology leader. It's uh, been in the international market uh, since uh, the 1980s, uh, providing plants all around the world. Uh, but we still maintain our headquarters in Madrid, Spain. Um, and we've, uh, as, as we've mentioned, uh, we now have a, uh, a base here in Pune. Um, we have private workshops, so we, we uh, cater for the whole spectrum of designing, installing uh, an alcohol plant. So design, engineering, fabrication, installation, um, commissioning, and startup. We are continuously uh, doing research and investigation. Um, to maintain our position in the in, in, in the alcohol sector um, and this is basically what's kept us going for the last 150 years. Okay, Thompson is still um, is head of a group, uh, is, is, uh, owns a group of companies. Um, basically the companies are, are companies that we've set up either for, to, to do special investigation. For example, there you can see Enzymatrix. Um, this is a company we set up to do investigation into enzymes for the 2G uh, technology, uh, which requires um, uh, new developments in, in enzymes and bacteria. Um, you'll see other, obviously, it's also still India there. Well, the other main, a lot of the companies there are uh, commercial representatives of Thompson around the world. So we've supplied plants uh, around, uh, like I said before, in the five continents of the world. Um, basically, being a Spanish uh, company, most, uh, most of, still, still now, most of our work is in uh, Latin America, South and Central America. But uh, we supply plants in Africa, Asia, Eastern Europe, um, as you can see on that map there. Okay, the technology, um, all the technology that we, we provide, we develop in-house. Um, and we 
we've done that over the last 150 years, um, and we continue looking into new methods, new processes, new uh, fabrication methods, new so in all the facets of uh, uh, designing and supplying uh, and running uh, a distillation plant, we're continuously looking on how improvements can be made. Um, obviously, over the years, uh, we've done more than 500 projects. Uh, and we also, um, in the past, we've, we've operated plants. Uh, uh, and and uh, also, we, we, uh, we have a department with uh, uh, selling and trading alcohol on the international market. So basically we're, we're involved from day zero until the end of the life of the plant. Okay. Obviously, uh, as mentioned there, uh, being a European company, uh, we apply European standards and that's one of our main goals is, is to maintain quality throughout the whole process. So that's quality in, in engineering, quality in fabrication and quality in products. One thing which we found um, operating all over the world and uh, with different feedstocks, with different conditions, that we have to come up with a very flexible plant, uh, with a very flexible process. Uh, because there are no, as I, as I say many times, there are no two plants the same. Uh, there will be climatic conditions to take into account, feedstock conditions, alcohol quality conditions. So there are many things to take into account and basically we will supply a tool which gives you the best fit for your particular conditions and uh, it, it's flexible. So if one day you want to change from molasses to, to, to juice, you can do it. And if you want to change to this bio syrup, we can do it. Okay. So, uh, as, as I said, the, the projects are custom designed and we have a multidisciplinary team uh, during the engineering phase for that. Okay, the workshop, uh, we are now, uh, with, for the India market, uh, obviously the majority of the fabrication is done in India, uh, but we still supply the more critical components from Spain, um, the components which are patented by us, um, and to maintain the, 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 the process quality. Okay. As I mentioned before, research and development um, investigation uh, plays a very important part. And uh, we dedicate, uh, we have a dedicated laboratory and uh, pilot plant where we can do uh, many of the experimental uh, tests uh, for improvements and what we're doing lately is a lot on alternative feedstocks um, and as, as was said before um, we are experts for example we, we developed a process for Mexico for, for uh, agave, agave is a cactus um, so we did a lot of study and development in the laboratory and it's now successfully working in, in Mexico. So, the, every plant we will tailor a build, a custom build for each case. So, a case by case, uh, again, this involves uh, getting to know the customer, the customer's requirements, and we will gradually reach uh, a plant. And a, and, a, and a service uh, depending on the requirements of each customer. Okay? So, again, the other thing, uh, we have a lot of experience in different feedstocks uh, around the world. Um, obviously, in India, molasses, sugarcane molasses is the predominant feedstock. Uh, but if, if you go to Mexico, you'll have the Agave cactus, uh, if you go to Eastern Europe, it's wheat, uh, 
And if you go to US, it's corn. So each uh, area will have its different feedstock. And we even test uh, uh, things like Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, so this is uh, another feedstock which uh, in, 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 in the Mediterranean climate is giving good results. So we will test any specific uh, feedstock uh, to see uh, how the process should be designed according to the feedstock. Um, yeah, Tomsa has supplied, uh, as, as I said before, uh, we can supply from individual equipment to EPC projects, and that's all depending on the, the customer requirements. Okay, in Europe, many many of the plants now we will supply. The customer itself will supply uh, the utilities, and, and we will supply the more process uh, critical components. But uh, uh, so we we are able to 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 give the customer uh, what is best suited in his case. Basically when we, we uh, uh, get a project, we will split the plant into different sections. Uh, obviously there's a the process um, itself and uh, what's required is all the utilities around it, storage uh, uh, areas, and we can go through with the customer uh, on each section, seeing what is the best fit uh, for the plant he is looking for. Okay, so as you can see there, one one of the things is a feedstock. So we need to know the feedstock, and we will we will design the pre-treatment of the feedstock, basically to get into fermentation, so that we can get the optimum feed to go into the fermentation to obtain. Uh, the maximum conversion of, of sugar or, or into, ferment, in, into alcohol. Distillation, dehydration, depending on what type of alcohol the customer wants to provide, uh, produce, um, and we will design the plant accordingly. And then, obviously, very important, well, as, as we've spoken of before, the waste treatment and, and recycling. Okay, so this is how we treat any project, and we'll go through this is uh, one technology which uh, we've, it's one of the tools we've got for uh, uh, pre-treatment before um, fermentation. And this is a, a, a diffuser, it's a continuous diffuser which we developed for the grape industry. Uh, uh, basically it was developed for uh, after pressing the grape for wine, uh, you will have the solid residue. And the solid residue still has some, a small percentage of alcohol and sugar uh, present in the solid residue. So we developed this diffuser to extract that small amount of alcohol and sugar so that we could produce ethanol. Again, we were taking the waste from the wineries and we were putting it through this machine to make into ethanol. And uh, this has been adapted now, and we use it in the agave cactus case in Mexico, and we use it also in sugar cane. Uh, again, sugar cane to extract the sugar for more fermentation. So fermentation, fermentation technologies, uh, we are familiar with, with all the current uh, fermentation systems, whether they be aerobic, anaerobic, uh, different type strains of yeast, um, continuous type fermentations, batch type fermentations, uh, semi-continuous. So again, this is, depending on the feedstock, depending on the customer requirements, we will recommend which is the best uh, uh, system for each particular case. Distillation, as you all know, distillation is a series of columns. Again, the design of this will depend on what the result of fermentation is and what type of alcohol is required to be produced, or what types of alcohol, okay? In many cases, uh, 
uh, customer requires to produce an RS or a spirit for a, a particular beverage, he wants to produce a, an ENA, a neutral alcohol, so we can design the plant to produce these multi-products uh, multi and, and give the flexibility to the customer. Dehydration. Um, basically now it's recognized that for bioethanol, for ethanol, uh, the most adequate method uh, currently is, uh, is using molecular sieves. So we can, we can design and supply molecular sieves to give the, the, the alcohol required. Um, again, the flexibility, we can add this on to an existing distillery so that an existing distillery can, as well as produce uh, neutral alcohol, can go into ethanol as well. Evaporation systems. Again, this can be applied to waste treatment. Again, it's an option. We have to look at the feedstock, what waste is produced, and we can recommend whether evaporation can be used or not. Uh, um, and using multi-effects evaporators, uh, we can reduce the steam cost, we can integrate, we look at integration into, into the distillery itself, integrating the sections to reduce overall energy costs. Storage areas, obviously it's a hazardous material, uh, it's a flammable uh, liquid, so we're going to have to look into uh, fire regulations, regulations on storage, uh, which we're all very familiar with. Familiar with. Okay, so uh, basically what we want to supply the customer is quality, confidence, in the, in the equipment and the, the people uh, uh, that we will supply, efficiency of the plant itself, and a full commitment from Thompson. So basically I'm just gonna run through some references uh, that you can see the, the variation of plants that we've uh, supplied in the past. You will see that many are in South and Central America. Uh, some names that you will see, uh, obviously in the beverage sector, uh, that you will know. Uh, this was Bacardi. This is Agave Cactus uh, in Campari in Mexico. Uh, again, Agave Cactus Casa Cuevo, which is a well-known tequila supplier. Diageo in the USA. This is a strange uh, raw feed, one of the, the stranger raw feedstocks. This is in Valencia. This is uh, using waste. This is oranges after, m m mainly oranges after pressing for, for, for juice. So this is the waste from those factories. Um, there's still some sugar in there on which we've, we've extracted and, and used uh, to make uh, ethanol uh, as a fuel. Uh, corn, corn plant, this is 350,000 liters per day for bioethanol in Mexico. Uh, okay, uh, alcohol from wine, uh, uh, wine uh, grape waste, uh, so this is in France, Ravengoa, this was converted into bioethanol. Sugarcane molasses, similar to, to here in India. This is a super fine ENA plant in Mexico. Cassava in Vietnam. Another cane molasses in Cuba. This is uh, this was uh, this is the first uh, molecular seed we supplied in France. So this was an add-on to an existing distillery. Jose Cuevo, this is a diffusion system uh, in use with, with uh, agave cactus. Rum Barcelo, it's one of the well-known rums in, in Central America. And that's uh, 
the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening. I think we can have one or two questions. I'll try and answer. In any case, we're available. Uh, we also have a stand. Uh, so, any further questions, and I can answer at the stand. But I have one. You have one question. <laughs> The methanol, the, yeah, the methanol, uh, in, in fact, <laughs> it's a strange thing. Uh, tequila requires, some of the tequila drinks require a minimum amount of methanol. Okay? Um, and normally the methanol is around 50 to 100 ppm. Okay? For tequila, they require a minimum of 50 ppm. Many other people. And that's, this is probably because the traditional methods that they used before, there was a lot of fiber during fermentation, uh, which is the fiber which causes the, the methanol. Um, and this is one of the specifications in, in some of the tequila factories that you need a, a minimum amount of methanol. Well, yeah, normally you get around 50 to 100. We have we have a sugar we have a, a diffuser operating with the sugar cane. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we supplied. Yeah, yeah. Basically, in the, with sugar cane, we have we we supplied uh, diffusers for sugar cane, okay? for for uh, sugar cane for pro for producing uh, alcohol. Okay? So so in, with with the sugar cane, uh, again, the sugar cane has to be chopped into small pieces. Uh, but the fiber is open. I think, I think Roman is asking about can you extract uh, sugar from the gas by using coal? Ah, well, sugar? Ah, from the gas after milling? Yes. The thing is, after milling. So you're saying after after four or five mils, the bagasse, the sugar which is residual in the bagasse. With mill, with the mill. extract the last uh, 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 7%, okay? So in that case, really, it's not recommendable to do it because it, economically, it won't, it won't work out. With a, but if you, if you we've, we've done sugar cane through one mill, so there's still uh, a large quantity of sugar left in the bagasse, and then use the diffuser to extract up to 98 percent of the sugar okay? so the actual sugar total sugar extracting uh, is, is, is greater than just using mills and the juice once the juice comes out the juice basically we are extracting uh, sugar sugar juice this can be sent directly without clarification to fermentation after the fuser after <coughs> Yeah. 
but the ju you produce juice, and the juice goes to fermentation. You can come to the stand and you can look at some examples. Hello. I have a small question. Yeah, I have a small question uh, here. Uh, although it's not a technical question, but uh, you said something about uh, Vietnam is plant from uh, producing ethanol from cassava or producing alcohol from cassava. Uh, can you give us an idea from how thousand tons of cassava, how much alcohol or ethanol could be produced? Uh, first thing, the first uh, question is uh, raw cassava or dry cassava? Uh, I'm totally unaware of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the first time I experience I'm Cause, hearing about cassava. So. Normally cassava, uh, during the season, uh, uh, the plants will use uh, raw cassava. So raw cassava has uh, around 20... 25 percent uh, 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 convertible sugar and 25 percent starch okay. which converts into sugar okay and uh, uh, dry cassava has more uh, basically uh, for the off season they use dry cassava uh, which has uh, 60 percent starch okay so how much do you need for if you use dry starch uh, dry cassava you will probably need so it's, it's something in the region of 2.7 kilograms for one liter of alcohol. Okay. And during the season, uh, I have to make a quick calculation. With around 25 percent starch, uh, it's, it's three times more. No, 25 to 60. Yeah. 140. Yeah, approximately. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.